you can. Spins a web any size. Catch your seeds just like flies. Look out. Here comes the Spider-Man. A few days have now passed since Ock's arrest. Peter's been working tirelessly with Betty to find the so-called Monster of Manhattan. They've come close with a few leads from time to time, as we've seen Betty compile all the evidence as Peter worked on obtaining more. We opened in the bugle. Jameson was on the phone once again to his mystery assailant as he started writing down a random slew of digits which looked a lot like coordinates. As he hung up, he shouted in Miss Brandt and told her to deliver this to Parker wherever he is. We harsh cut across the city as we saw Peter in full Spider-Man attire as he swung feet first breaking down the door to the jewelers. We saw a few thieves inside with odd looking ski masks and guns as they were all startled by Spider-Man. He stood heroically with his hands on his hips, splurting out quips at the thug's expense. They started shooting as Pete flipped and dodged past the bullets. He shot a web toward their guns and yanked them out of their hands before throwing them at their heads. As they were dazed, Pete would roundhouse kick them both as they were sent flying back into the wall. Pete webbed the pair up as he dropped his calling card on one of their chests. He charmingly quipped at the jeweler before swinging off. Later that day, he made it back to Aunt May's house. He was enjoying a nice sandwich while fixing a couple bullet holes in his suit when May walked in. He quickly hid the suit as May asked what was wrong. Pete struggled to find his words as she handed Pete the note with the coordinates that she said Betty had visited earlier. Pete was confused as he grabbed the telephone off the wall and dialed Betty's number. Back at her apartment, we saw her as she told Pete Jameson was talking to someone about the case and they had a possible sighting, but looking at it, Pete saw these were in Florida. Betty said she already talked to Jonah and he's already paid for the flight. Pete joked asking how she got him to do such a thing as she said Jonah would do anything to get a story. Pete asked when he was leaving as she said Jonah had booked the flight for tomorrow morning and that she came round earlier to see him before he went. Pete said he'd come round and see her after he got back, but Betty laughed over the phone and said she had his tickets. Henceforth, he needed to come and see her. Pete would smile. He ran downstairs and told May he had to run out for something as she was confused saying it was almost midnight. But Pete told her not to worry as he grabbed his jacket and the keys to Uncle Ben's old car now that Peter's had been wrecked. We cut to him driving across town through the night city as we cut to Betty sat on the couch eating some ice cream in front of the TV. She had a knock on the door as we saw Peter. Betty laughed as the pair kissed. In the meantime, we cut to a few hundred miles away in Florida late that night as we saw a boat filled with a few fishermen in the river. They made some quick jokes about the life at sea as we saw their boat get rocked pretty badly. Hesitant, they thought about heading home, when suddenly, a green, scaly beast shot out of the water and ripped the boat in two before dragging in the fishermen. They were pulled deep into the water as seconds later, we saw a pool of blood rise to the surface. As a few hours went by, back in New York, we saw Betty Laid resting on Peter's shoulder as she asked him about why he decided to be Spider-Man. Peter at first stayed silent, before he told Betty about the night that everything changed. A few years ago, right after he got his powers, he tried to win some money to help his aunt and uncle with the mortgage payments. But after he won, the manager said the only way he'd get the money was if he signed a contract, and the manager refused to pay him. On his way out, the manager was robbed. Pete had the chance to stop the robber, but he was petty. He wanted revenge. After he had gotten home late that night, the place was flooded with cops. Pete's uncle had been killed. Pete was angry. He tracked down the killer to an old warehouse at the other end of the city. It was just Pete and him, and Pete was going to kill him. He came close, but before he could, the light shined through the window as Pete saw his face. It was the robber that he had chosen to let go. It made it clear that his Uncle Ben was killed because of Peter, and his last words to him was that with great power, there must also come great responsibility. And Pete just knew he had to use these powers to make sure nobody else ended up like his Uncle Ben. And Betty was speechless. She said she was so sorry. But Pete reassured her that it was okay. She told Pete that what he was doing took a lot of courage and a lot of guts. Pete was just glad that he had Betty to help keep his head straight. The two kissed again as Pete looked at the clock, saying he should probably leave. His aunt may be getting worried and he doesn't want to wake up late for the flight. She smiled. She handed Peter the plane tickets and she told him to be safe. He smiled and nodded, saying that he would, as long as she makes sure to keep old Pickle Plus in his place. 
They both left as we transitioned to the airport the next morning. Pete would be waiting with his bag as he queued up for the flight. But as he made it on the plane and sat down, he realized that Betty had sneakily snuck a Polaroid of the two in with his tickets. As Pete held it up, he smiled. The old man next to Peter told Pete he was a lucky guy and that his girl was quite a catch. Pete smiled and laughed, saying that he knew. The plane eventually set off as we saw Peter look out the window and out to New York. He started to have second thoughts and hoped the city would be okay for a few nights without him. But he had faith in the boys in blue and he knew they could handle it. Pete finally made it to Florida as we saw him make it to his room, which was a shitty apartment that Jonah had rented out for him. He saw the place was definitely not up to standards, but expected no less from America's most beloved newsman. As he started unpacking, he grabbed a hold of the file that Betty had given him as he started reading about a lead one of the journalists the Bugle had found, which talked about a scientist named Dr. Curtis Connors, who had previously been doing work on regeneration of the human limbs. It was funded and run by Oscorp before an accident got Kurt fired. He moved back to Florida with his family, but the dates matched up with the creature's sightings. Pete stopped and remembered the name Kurt Connors from when he was at science school when he was younger. Kurt was his teacher as Pete remembered a lesson in which Kurt had taught him after he messed up with the whole experiment that things are built to be broken. But there are things in life worth living for. You just have to know what they are. Peter knew Kurt was a good man. And if these leads are pointing toward him being this monstrous creature, then he was at a loss for words. He would change out of his sweat-filled shirts, noting how Florida was notably warmer than Queens, as we cut to a lake house in a closed-off area in the outskirts of Florida, as Pete grabbed his camera and walked up the steps before knocking on the front door. He looked down, seeing a young boy who had answered the door. Pete asked if his dad was home, but Billy had a sad look on his face, saying he hasn't been home for a while. We then heard a female voice in the back ask who was at the door as we saw Martha come to the door. She told Billy to go and play as she asked who Pete was and what he was doing here. Pete said he was a reporter from the Daily Bugle, as Martha said she had no comment before trying to close the door. Pete told her to wait. He said he knew Kurt, he was his teacher, his friend. He wasn't just there for a paycheck, he was here because he cared, and he wanted to know what was going on. Martha would then open the door after a second of hesitation as she told Pete to come take a seat. We cut to the inside as Martha offered him a drink. Pete said he was okay as the two talked about Kurt. Martha said Kurt was hired by Dr. Osborne and Donald Menken to work on a cure. Pete stopped for a second. What kind of cure? As he turned to look at a picture of Kurt and his family sat on the mantelpiece. He stared down to his missing arm, realizing what the cure was about. Pete looked back to Martha and asked if Kurt was working on limb regeneration. She said they both were. We worked together throughout our early 20s before he took up teaching. He was always trying to find a way to get back what he had lost. Pete told Martha what Kurt told him when he was younger, reciting the quote from earlier about appreciating what you do have, because what we have is worth more than what we have lost. Martha said she last saw Kurt a few days ago, but she didn't want anyone else to know because at the end of the day, it's still her husband. Pete reassured her that it was gonna be okay and that he was gonna bring back her husband. And as he said that, we saw Billy run in from the other room as he handed Pete a drawing. We saw a big, green, scaly monster as Pete almost gulped. Later that night, Pete scouted around the lake house suited up. He stuck to the trees to cover a good vantage point as we heard his spider sense flash. He turned his head as we saw a ruffle in the bushes. Pete would dive down as he saw a tree which had been torn down. As it laid on the ground, Peter saw the multiple claw marks around the trunk of the tree. Suddenly, his spider sense flashed again. As he turned around, we saw a rise into frame. It was the grizzly snarling and menacing lizard. Walloping web snappers. Pete's eyes widened as the lizard pounced on Peter as the two went crashing through the woods. They started fighting as Pete tried breaking through to Connors with no prevail. Pete started crawling up a tree as lizard followed behind him before he grabbed Pete's foot and launched him into the body of water below. As Peter started sinking, dazed, he saw the figure gaining momentum toward him and it was coming fast. The two fall under the water before Pete tried making a run for it, or a swim for it, should I say. He eventually made it to shore as he tried running. He made it to the ruins of an old tower that fell a few years ago. As he tried attending to his wounds, he got to cover, but as he did, he could hear the snarls in the distance. He ran out of cover as he tried reasoning with Kurt, 
He knew he was still in there, as he reminded him of the man that he was. We saw Kurt begin fighting with his lizardous alter ego, but he couldn't quite break free of the trance, so Pete had to punch it out of him. The two of them enthralled in one massive final brawl. Pete was ripped to shreds as we saw the cuts and wounds on his shoulder. He was sore and in pain, as he said he was done fighting. The lizard was about to swipe at Pete and land the final blow when they heard a shout. They turned to the side to see Billy standing there. Pete shouted for Billy to get the hell out of here as the lizard knocked Peter back before walking over to Billy. It snarled right in his face as Billy stood his ground and said he still believed his father was in there. His voice finally broke through to Kurt as we saw a tear run down his scales. We heard him yelling out in pain as Pete woke up as we saw the lizard running away in pain. Pete tried to protect Billy as he ran after his dad. Pete followed limping behind as they chased the lizard's footsteps. They eventually found Kurt laying face down, back in his human form. Pete would pick him up. A few hours later, Kurt woke up. He was back in his lake house as we saw Billy and Martha along with Peter who was messing around with Billy. Kurt came to his senses as Martha asked if he was okay. Billy ran up to him and hugged him as Pete asked what he remembered. Kurt said it was blurry, but he remembers an old friend reminding him of what was important. And what was important to Kurt was his family. He apologised. He said he was sorry as Pete reassured him that it was going to be okay. Kurt would ask if this means he was going to jail. Pete would turn to Martha. He said he made a promise that he was going to bring her husband back and Billy's father and he's going to honour that promise. Pete would leave Kurt to reconnect with his family as Pete caught his flight back home. We saw a sweet moment of Betty waiting at the airport for Pete. As he thought about what Kurt said about the importance of being around those you love as he grabbed Betty and he kissed her passionately. As Pete asked if she wanted to move in, they wanted to take their relationship to the next stage. Betty smiled, blushing, as she said there's nothing more she'd love, as the two hugged tightly before cutting to black.